A lot of my content these days is purely based on gaming. While today's video is also about gaming, we're not going to be showing off just one part of a whole match or some sections of some really obscure game that would have been better with a few improvements, etc. Instead, we'll be doing a top 10 video on my Pioneer games. This is only the second top 10 video that I've made so far, the second top video related to gaming and the third top video overall. So criticism is still accepted as long as it is constructive. Both of the previous videos will be shown in the end screen. Let's talk about minigames. The minigames are what truly made Mario Party franchise stand out. In most centuries, a minigame will be prepared every time each player gave their roll to the dice and moved to their respective spaces. Depending on the spaces, they will be confronting each other normally, or in battles, or be team up, three against one or two teams of two formed together. And in two cases, Mario Party 7 and Super Mario Party, you'll have fun with even more players, 8 in the case of the former and 16 in the case of the latter. Regardless, with so many games introduced in this series, there has got to be at least a few fuck-ups on the way. Some of the minigames are just mediocre, some of them are plain awful, and some are more than ready to basically abuse you and will get to those later. So let's head on to the top 10 worst Mario Party minigames. The rules are false. I'll also include the lock based minigames because, well actually, a few of them, if not most, do rely on some kind of strategy. But that strategy may be bad and, well, it still counts. If a game is causing me frustration or causes other people frustration, or is generally frustrating, it's also cloud on this list. If the minigame is not for the handheld games, basically Advanced, DS, Island Tour, and Star Rush, it can be on this list, because I've not played any of those yet. Mario Party The Top 100 does count, even if it's on handheld, because it's a completion of 100 minigames for the console versions. And it will probably be necessary to re include and reference it. And yeah, that may happen especially to the N64 era games. Because Project 64 did not help me with the cheats at all. Last but not least, some of the awful minigames that are considered awful by other people and not by me will be in a dishonorable mentions list instead of the main list, since in here it will be more like 80 to 90% of my word for it. It can't be entirely my word for it, like you happen sometimes, and maybe not at all. Who knows? Without further ado, let's begin. Number 10 is Render Madness from Mario Party 8, off to a wonderful start. Ladies, gentlemen, and people who don't identify as either gender, we have some rocks that are less than 1 meter above the sea level, some ugly looking mud, and 4 lily pads where competitors are. But the madness is missing, what are we gonna do? Let's leave sarcasm to the cover locker and actually mention that this game is extremely boring. And spoilers alert, it's not the only entry on this list to be destroyed. I'm aware that most of the things that have such a great concept don't always turn into masterpieces, but they could have tried to put some other obstacles, for example, or make those lily pads much faster. The only thing you can actually hear besides the music is the set of voices from the four characters, which vaguely makes this minigame interesting and surely not make you sleep after just 5 seconds. There are three reasons why this is at the start of the list and only a minor annoyance compared to the rest of the entries. First of all, it uses mulch controls. And while Mario Party 8 doesn't have the most consistent controls, at least they're used when needed. While this game could function with a simple controller, or with a directional pad for that matter, some interactivity really would hurt. Second of all, there is a fairly large collection of minigames in this game, and I'm pretty sure that this only occurs once in a while. Sure, 
four player and battle mini games are the dominance. But given how the computer doesn't let you go by the same side as other players every single time, you get to play 1 vs 3 or 2 vs 2 mini games which are far more fun. First of all, if the planets do align, and in this case they kinda do, and with easy computers, you will be able to win this mini game by doing absolutely nothing. This is redeeming my opinion for such a boring game. Number 9, Contagious for Mario Party 7. Mario Party 7 has the single largest collection of minigames of any home console version with 88, including 8 player minigames. And the second in the entire series, besides Mario Party is the top 100. But if that doesn't count, then Mario Party 7 takes the crown. And has bonus minigames as well. Do we enjoy them? Well, yeah, we enjoy bonus minigames, especially the ones with some kind of strategy. This minigame does have them. Get the dice blocks at the right time. Uh, excuse me? Dice blocks? Yes, you've heard me right. Dice blocks in a minigame. I think it's already more than enough that we get to hit dice blocks for rages in battles. Or when we simply want to move from one space to the next to get or to lose some coins. I wonder how did Nintendo and Hudson Soft run out of ideas and went as far as playing the most basic mechanic of a fourth game into a mini game? Because that's just stupid. Even if this game was actually executed properly, you have just 20 seconds on your disposal. And while you can get to 20 coins, it's almost impossible with this kind of timing. I get that it's a bonus mini game and you're not meant to gain so much. But at least put a dice ball from 0 to 10 and give players 45 seconds. However, with that being said, it's still useless. Number 8 is Bowser Wrestling from Mario Party 4. Mario Party 4 is the first entry on the GameCube, and it seems more like a remaster of Mario Party 3 than its own game. Sure, it does have its own elements and greatly enhanced graphics due to its transition. It's also the first game to feature Bowser's own minigames, and most of them suck. The one that actually sucks the most is Bowser's Red Link. And it's pretty early on this list because it causes a lot of frustration but it's not possible. And with the specific strategy required, it's not too bad either. The problem is that this specific strategy is very hard to get a hand on. If you attack too early, you get defeated. If you attack too late, you get defeated as well. If you try to defend yourself, your opponent will get the golden mushroom and you'll get defeated. And believe me or not, this happens even more often when you're fighting against Bowser. Seriously. Name me one person that managed to defeat Bowser the first time they tried this minigame. You can't. That's how frustrating this minigame can be. At number 7 we have Candlelight Fright tied with Making Waves both for Mario Party 4. No, seriously, what the fuck is wrong with both of these minigames? They're tired at number 7 for one simple reason. Bias. Let's begin with Candlelight Fright. Whenever it's one of the free CPUs that is against the rest of the players, they do have a way of winning this game. Running all over the rather small room, the guns aren't even accurate. And besides that, you have to hit the one player 5 times in 30 seconds, which averages out to 1 hit every 6 seconds. How in the sweet mother primates are you able to defeat this Kong with that kind of timing? The worst part is that if you're against all the CPUs, they'll just stick together and hit you 5 times in less than 50 seconds. Don't get me wrong, I do suck at this game, but that is no excuse when the complete bias. But let's not forget about making waves, which is on this list for the exact same reason. The computers are able to withstand 30 major blasts coming from the three players, and they all have to do 
is simply to get to the center or to stand at the opposite edge or where the computer is about to fall, while players will be splashed off, especially in the last few seconds. If that's how it actually works, then Mario Party 4 must definitely have some of the cheapest AI, even more difficulty, which is very awkward for an otherwise great game. Number 6, Bounce It Rounds from Mario Party 3. Mario Party 3 wasn't exactly my favorite Mario Party game, but it was the first one that I actually got to play, since it was also the first one to feature more characters. And it's also the first game to include a boss battle at the end of the story mode, which is very interesting, but it's frustrating. The problems with Bounce It Rounds are that your attacks are limited to just spinning, the fact that the already small arena gets even smaller, to the point where two of the three players will fall unless they jump over each other, which isn't feasible. And that the computers are, just like its successor, cheap. Sorry. I have managed to win several of these mini games by doing absolutely nothing. But that's the problem. Sometimes it can be too generous and sometimes it can be too greedy. Number 5 is Bashing Cash for Mario Party. Really has a soft bashing cash? I understand it sounds clever, but the minigame is just awful otherwise. First of all, I've seen multiple instances where people play this game in almost every situation Yoshi was the one in the Bowser suit. Oh, to a great beginning. Second of all, even if Yoshi isn't the one in the Bowser suit, the character that is in the suit is not able to attack the three players that have a hammer greater than their already large heads. And the suit also makes the one player much larger and slower, not to the point of a snail, but still, it makes it next to impossible to keep every single coin that they have. For example, look at the start of this footage that I personally recorded. At the beginning, Yoshi has 47 coins. He gets hit once, 42. Gets hit again, 37. Once more, 32. Finally, the time ends, he gets hit one more time, 27. That's a 20 coin difference. And that's with simple, easy computers. Go luck trying to lose less than that or nothing at all. At number 4 we have Slow Wheel for Mario Party 7. It's really surprising for most of you by including other Mario Party 7 minigames here besides Coin Cages. But again, there are minigames that are genuinely frustrating for me. This one is the worst of the pack. Because I really hate minigames that rely on timing. And for those who play quite a lot like me and for button mashers also like me, this is just ugly. I appreciate your opinion if you think that this minigame isn't that bad, but to me it is. Seriously, even with Dolphin being 20% slower than normal, getting the key is not at all any easier. Some people might say I should get the fast car out of the back, but on average the situation is not any better. This minigame taught me how to lose more of my patience instead of gaining it. So this is quite cool. Even if that's not the case, by the time you get to the first slot, you run out of time. It happened to me three times and not even the first slot worked, let alone the other two. So if you're like me, the chances of losing all your coins by failing this mini game are high, and I just cannot stand that. This is also why I hate most single player mini games. Number 3, Limp the Chimp for Mario Party 8. Oh lord, another dumb joke. Just, just walk up some stuff, just go on. This is considered by many to be the single worst minigame in Mario Party 8, and I can say the same thing. You control a boy chimp, helping it climb to the top. Okay, first of all, 
The controls are just too sensitive. Second of all, it's also one of those cheap AI cases, because the computers always seem to react perfectly. Besides that, the coconuts that fall are just unpredictable. And to make it all worse, have just one coconut fall onto you and well, the domino effect will cure to the point of making you sigh and regret that you're playing the mini in the first place. Because all the other coconuts that come after will catch your chip as well. Even if we have the unpredictability and the stupid sensitive controls, this is the most boring minigame I've ever played. With the chips moving as slow as the growth of our nails, you might actually forget it does end eventually. And number 2 is Hitstroke for Mario Party 5. Mario Party 5 is ignored by quite a lot of people. I have no idea why, because we even have Koopa Kid as a playable character. Maybe it's because it doesn't have that many bad minigames. Or because of its monotonous music. But then again, Mario Party 4 also had music of the same instruments. One of the few bad minigames in the game, however, is the worst. It one of the worst actually in the entire series. Introducing Heatstroke. This would have not even been on this list if it had not been for one single thing. Swinging. There are two ways to swing in this minigame. Actual swinging and fake swinging. What's the difference? Well, aesthetically none. After a great start, once again you have 30 seconds on the clock. And anything can happen in 30 seconds, including having all the characters being thrown from one single platform. On top of that, the one player will face swing to let you jump, and that wouldn't be a problem until you get to the latter half of the platforms, where the one player will be able to actually swing against the platform before you end your jump cooldown, down, and you have no way to escape. At some point I managed to get out as far as the final platform and then I got thrown at the last second. Butter bows are just a topping over the yogurt, but unlike other toppings, it can easily be avoided. Seriously, I rather get hurt by 10,000 butter bows than play this minigame again. I mean, I feel so fucking bad for the computer players as I eliminated them even earlier than they eliminated me. How cheap can this minigame get? Well, as cheap as no other minigame can get. If the face wing was always slightly different in terms of appearance, then it might actually be in a battle of steel. Or make the portal balls make oh, some things like move against the world player. It's already a glorious moment when you actually get to win as one of the fleet players. When the time runs out, which is far more likely, or when all the platforms are eliminated and suddenly one of the fleet players survives, getting to the ground. And you can go for the Star Wars joke at this point. Well, since we got this far, here are some dishonorable mentions. And before we get to them, I'll not be talking and still leave some text commentary over the video and the captions. Just like last time. So. Here we go.
Well, I'm surprised you got this far into the video because we're about to get to the worst mini game ever made, and not surprisingly, it's luck based. Let's open the curious for numero uno, and it is. Sea Terror Royal Party 6. This is to a surprise of everyone. Out of all the shitty minigames I could have picked, this is the one that ended up on the beach scene. You may be saying that I could have picked better, but no, I went with this base game. In Seer Terror, apparently, Bowser is able to tell you the future. Hooray! The only thing you have to do is to use one of the four looks showed. Believe it or not, there are 17 outcomes. And I had to number them from the Super Mario Wiki page. 16 of which can occur for any world you desire, and only one is specific to one place of the fortune telling building, Bunny Bowser. Yes, the black hole is the only outcome to completely take over Bowser. He doesn't even say anything as a result. The only other positive outcomes are the mushroom and the coins were given. There is a somewhat similar outcome to the coins, but they get stolen by Goomba, so don't celebrate too early. And only one outcome is neutral, with the explosion of the Bowser bomb that have been used in Mario Party 4 and 5 in two memorable minigames. Bowser Big Blast and... Wow, I said memorable when I already forgot the name of the other one. No matter. Of all the recorded outcomes, all of them basically had the characters spinning, getting yeah, sucked into the pit, and bouncing them off the roof. I know, this is weird. And uh, at the first try, I actually got a mushroom, and Bowser said that I'll get fungus of it. Now, oh, wonderful. But it's the worst because it's almost always that you get the worst outcomes, no matter what you do. There are so many possibilities because calculating that you have four spaces and 16 outcomes that can be before basically anywhere, you do have quite a bit of a chance. 17 is a, not a very small number if you say, and if you power to four, well, it becomes a great number. So let's multiply 17 by 17 by 17 by 17 and you get 83,521 combinations. Any possibilities? Well, wonderful. I can't believe that this may actually be something, but whatever. I may actually be exaggerating and in fact it's not 17 times 17 times 17 times 17, it's just 17 times 4, which is 68. But even then, even if these two numbers are very, very different from each other, they're still large by Mario Party standards. And to, to pay it all off, Bowser only tells you the future after you get the outcome. That's just cheap. And that is why I say that it's even worse than any other minigame, even worse than the Dishonorable Mentions. So, that concludes the list. If you think that there is a minigame that isn't on this list and should be, then say in the comments. Of course, that everyone has different opinions, and I respect them. Only as long as it's given politely, because sometimes people can be extremely toxic, and that's not good to our society. Oh, I'll see you next time.